What's up, guys? <clears throat> Back here with another Dark Souls lore through. We just beat Havel. We were just able to put on Havel's ring so we can actually wear some clothes now. I realized all that previous session was one session, more or less. It's all recorded on the same day. Um, but, uh, I realized that, um, I didn't grab the blue tear stone ring after I killed that one knight, so we should definitely do that now while we're here by Havel. <laughs> wow, convenient. All right. So yeah, here's, you know, obviously we saw this earlier on from the bridge above. And here's a hollow that has just been clutching onto the blue tear stone ring next to the Black Knight, I suppose, maybe. Um, he was killed by the Black Knight, but it boosts defense when while HP is low. Because it didn't help for that guy. The rare gem called Tear Stone has the uncanny ability to sense imminent death. This blue tear stone from Katarina boosts the defense of its wearer when in danger. So yeah, uh, Katarina is known for a couple different rings, um, and I was going to mention this the other day. Um, there's the speckled stone plate ring. I think it's that one. You know, I'm getting my games mixed up sometimes. But that is a ring. I think the only way to get it in the game is that you can kill Sigmire of Katarina um, before you complete his quest line. I'm probably not going to do that. So we're just going to... You're going to have to let the lore from that <laughs> you have to go up on read it online or something. But obviously, we're going to go get another ring uh, from Katarina right now, actually. I thought about it, and I don't want to take on the uh, Crystal Golems uh, and the Hydra at this juncture. I think that'll be better once I have the Wood Grain ring or whatever that allows me to run in water. Also, I think it would be better once I've gone to, uh, once I'm dealing with the archives and Seath and all that stuff so we can talk about the golems and, and the hydras and I guess, oops, uh, I guess Ash Lake. Um, like that'll all be done later. But for now, we're going to go to the um, I guess we'll level up here. Um, we're going to go to the Valley of the Drakes, which is you know not a extremely exciting area for lore or anything, but it um, it connects you know quite a bit of the world. We can also fight some drakes. How's my lightning defense? Oops. Why do I do that? Lightning nine. Yeah, so we're doing all right here. I can only assume that the rest of the uh, armor is as good. Mask of the Sealer stuff is really good. I mean, for lightweight stuff, uh, it defends pretty well across the board. I, I, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to use it. Plus, I'm really fascinated by the story of the Sealers in New Londo, so... I'm not exactly cosplaying, but...
So yeah, here's the uh, here's the drakes. They're not that fun to fight. Um, I'm probably gonna take these guys all out just because. Oops. Do get dragon scales from these guys. Um, which is cool. Um, but I'm not going to be doing covenants or anything, so. Yeah, and that's another way you get the spider shield. Again, I don't actually remember if <laughs> you can get the spider shield in the depths. Oh, you got rubber banding. I forgot. Okay, now we're screwed. Um, I'm just gonna run for it. Alright, so... <laughs> I could not die here. So yeah, there's some really large doors here. Like... Really large. And, um, they all lead into this walled off area, which obviously we're going to see later. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this is. I mean, I know it's kind of holding up this ladder or whatever, but, um, I think that, you know, when you actually go through this area and on the other side, you, you know, there's, there's kind of a thing you can do to open these doors, so I wonder if that's related to that. I'm not sure, but anyway, let's read this. Red Tearstone Ring. So, yeah. Oh, this, so the Red Tearstone Ring is from Kareem. Hmm. Never knew that. The Red Stone Tearstone Ring from Kareem boosts the attack of the wearer when it's in danger. Defense. Maybe this speaks to, um, I figured they were so similar that they were from the same place, but um, I suppose maybe if you were to read into this at all, which you probably shouldn't, is that you know Kareem boosts attack and Katarina uh, boosts defense. Like in other words, those two uh, areas. Oh God. That was swift. I figured they'd forgotten about me, so I figured that wasn't going to be an issue, but it's alright. Did I really? I didn't think that I uh, kindled that. I think that's the wrong way. Alright. Well, anyway, what's 5,000 souls? I don't need that at this point. I got the red tear stone ring, that's all I wanted. But yeah, just as a refresher, Kareem, you know, is obviously the one that we've been kind of seeing associated with, you know, um, shady folks, maybe you would say. We've seen a lot about Felka, the goddess of sin in Kareem, and we've seen Oswald the Pardoner and Lautrec. So yeah, boosting the attack. Uh, when, when when your health is low is kind of interesting, and then Katarina, all we know about is Sigmire, and that, you know, I guess makes sense, because he has a really distinctive armor. So it would deal with defense. That was close. I should have gotten hit there. <laughs> My souls are actually up on the parapet thing. Alright, let's see if I cannot die passing through this guy. There we go. I wonder 
wonder if you can knock him off. I also can make these guys bleed, which is interesting. Alright, are you gonna give me a dragon skill for the. Nope. This is kind of maybe often missed. It's just a humanity from a hollow. Dead hollow. Um, I suppose I should have prepared a little bit um, so that I could uh, successfully uh, beat this guy. So this is, yeah, I mean, this is like a, this is an example of a dragon that um, became undead. So, I mean, I guess this would be the size of dragons and such from, you know, back in the day. But uh, this one has become undead and poisonous. Um, I mean, obviously right now it's just sitting here, but we're gonna fight it. Uh... wondering if I should go and get any uh, arrows before doing this. I, you know, I'm kind of just playing this off the cuff. I'm not trying to make some big planned playthrough or anything. But, um, yeah. I'll see what I can do with uh, my magic and I guess whatever feather arrows or whatever I have. Uh, and then maybe some attacking, um, but uh, we might just leave this guy for another time. Oh my god. Too close for comfort. I just think this area, oh yeah, he's alive. Dang. I guess I can just take him on from here, but I was gonna try to show a cool area. Okay, so we can get up to here. There's kind of an area that you can easily get up to just above this guy so that you can um, kind of shoot him or attack him or something comfortably. I mean, I guess you can do it from here, so I don't I really don't know. Man, I don't know that this is gonna... This is not gonna do much of anything. I really don't have any int. So this is not going well. I don't know outside of arrows if there's a good way to fight this guy. Um, I don't know, which is a design flaw. So, let us... Oh, I do have... Oh, but I did, have I attuned anything else? I have... well... Fireball. Okay. Well... Okay. That's much better. Uh, huh. I wonder why that's not hitting anymore. It did hit, am I crazy? What's going on? Huh. Okay, 
Well, that was fun. All right, so let's see here. Are you kidding me? Okay, I do have a longbow, which I can yield. All right, and I just have 16 feather arrows. Okay, anything helps. Oh, jeez. Looks like every other one hits him. I don't. I haven't confirmed whether or not this is like I have to just wait between these, or whether okay, they all hit but they just don't register. I'm gonna guess that they don't hit, so I'm gonna take this a little slow. I, I like. I don't even know what my plan is here. Taking him down enough that you know. I could do throwing knives and fire bombs. Let's do it up. This is the long haul. Do a dung pie. I, I wonder if these are made to toxic. Knowing this, these won't hit him. Oh, good. Well, that hit him once. I wonder if it'll ever hit him again, like the fireball. Like, what? Like, actually, what? Okay. That does do like area effect damage, so I guess that's probably what we're dealing with here. Okay, does this do more than 125? Yes. Okay, so one more. Let's finish him off with a throwing knife. This will be a humiliating way for him to die. And we get a dragon scale from him. <sighs> As I say, I wish I had planned that out a little bit better, but anyway. So now we can collect all this stuff around here. I think you can collect, you know, a lot of this stuff before, um... Before, uh, he, he, I, I can't remember. I think this is the one he doesn't like you taking. So the Dragon Crest Shield and Astora's Straight Sword. Let's take a look at those. Shield of a Nameless Knight, likely a high-ranked knight of Astora, one of the enchanted blue shields. The Dragon Crest Shield greatly reduces fire damage. Which would make sense. Oh, and we also got the Spider Shield, which we should read. Shield of the Savage Mountain Bandits, uniquely shaped with a large black spider etched upon it, has resistance to poison. Alright. Do we read all these? Perfectly standard bronze albert without any special power. Great. Uh, and we did read that. Slice tail of the gargoyle guarding the Bell of Awakening in the Undead Church, or patrolling in An Orlando. That's interesting. I mean, you can get the gargoyle tail axe from any gargoyle. And it isn't, I mean, I guess it's just the same items so you get it from both, but it does indicate that there's more gargoyles in An Orlando. can be used as a bronze battle axe, bends dramatically during large attacks, owing to its nature at its tail. Ooh, that's cool. Uh... A Stora's straight sword. Straight sword of an unknown knight, likely one of Astora's superiors. High quality weapon with a powerful blessing. So, someone from Astora was uh, fighting the dragon and had a dragon crest shield, which is good for against fire, which is what the dragons attacked with. Although that one had lost his fire and was spewing. 
poison. So yeah, I just wanted to show that, you know, there's this little area up here that makes it easy to kind of attack that guy from above. Probably would have been best to go up there. I mean, I couldn't have, you know, because he was spitting poison, I couldn't get through very easily, but, um, yeah, that's kind of a good way to be out of harm's way. So yeah, like up there is Firelink, and over there is New Londo, which makes sense, because those are close by, and then this is where Blight Town is, and then there's the Dark Root Garden. It's interesting putting like everything next to each other. There's going to be some someone interesting over there. Oh, I should go human at some point here. Oh, we should read the bandit stuff just in case it has anything. It's just another starting set, so I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, brigands who raid mountain hamlets and attack travelers. In addition to prote protecting against blazing sun, dust, and sand, it helps them tell friend and foe in the heat of battle. So, kind of flashy if you want to wear those. Um, yeah, so I guess let's just go back to Firelink here. And I mean, I guess uh, beyond kind of... Am I going to do New Londo? Yeah, it's interesting. I guess we come we come via New Londo here, so we just passed like so the door where we release all the water is right over there. In fact it looks like it might be open from this view. I don't know if that's it or if there's another Like, I'm actually unsure as to, like, you know, how, what the layout is and how that's, like, depicted. If you, like, open it, it, like, there's a, you know, you can see it or something from afar. So. So, let's, uh, let's go back to Firelink. And, uh, oh my goodness, I forgot about this. My cat was purring at my feet, so I did not even, uh, did not even look at that, which is great. This is real great. Sorry about that. I will completely ignore my cats from now on because it's just adding time. So that was uh, the Crestfallen Warrior, um, who has gone hollow. I probably should have guessed that he had gone hollow, although I don't know what his trigger is then, because we just spoke to him. Um, yeah, I really don't know what that would be. Oftentimes I've gotten knocked off the edge by that guy flying or I'm not fast enough to get by him, and he'll catch me with electricity, and at this point, that could easily kill me. So... I can't rest at the bonfire and fire link anyway, so... I don't think I'll have any problems with this guy, but... Of course, now that I try to fight him...
There's a lot at stake. Alright. So yeah, he like comes at you from over here. I guess he travels a lot far. Oh, I did come down here because I suppose you probably saw him run up and I missed it. Now this guy, when you fight him, at least when he's human, yes, he's the heater shield and the chainmail armor. That's what the undead merchant sells, actually, in Undead Bird. Um, yeah, but you don't get anything when he dies. So he, 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 like, if you fight him before he, uh, you know, goes hollow like that, he parries you so much. So he kind of is like a, uh, he's a lesson for the first, uh, players of this game that you don't want to mess around with people because, you know, he will, uh, he will fuck you up. Especially if you probably hadn't been dealing with parrying up until that point. Um, you know, I mean, it's like, boom. He just parries you, like, right away and does, like, half your health. But yeah. Rip in peace. Still can't rest at the bonfire. Let's see what uh, Griggs has to say. Oh, hello. Well, you certainly are keeping at myself. I'm fine. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, I think I'm supposed to buy everything from him to kind of progress Goodbye, him. Goodbye then. But do I'm, stay safe. I'm not going to do that. Let's play through. What I am going to do, what I should have done before. By the lords! You damn fool! Enough of you! Feel the wrath of the gods! Oh, you can resist my kick. Where's the wrath? Anyway, I'm killing Petrus because I... I want to, uh, save Rhea. And if you, um, leave him alive and save her... Oh, wow, he's gonna talisman me. What are you doing, dude? No. This can't be. It can't end like this. Yeah, so let me let me explain that. Yeah, so if you kill Petrus I'm not sure if there's another way to do it. I'm sure there is. But it takes per like exact timing. And I'm actually not good with any of that stuff, so basically, like, what's happening is that, you know, Petrus went to the catacombs, I think he abandoned them or did something to them, and and then came back, and, you know, if we, if we leave him to be with Rhea when she returns, once we save her from the catacombs, she goes to the undead parish, up above, but she'll die. Like, I don't know what the trigger is, so I'm just gonna kill Petrus. We don't need him for anything else. He's given us all the lore that we need, and you know, we, we've kind of learned his story, that he's a little bit duplicitous, and um, now I can just play out Rhea's story without fear of doing anything with with him. Um, yeah, so I think we're pretty much ready to go on to Sen's Fortress. Of course, i probably going to be like, oh, I should have done this. You know what? Let's go back to the... Uh, Let's go back to the uh, Undead Asylum. You know, and that, while we're here, and while before we're doing all this stuff, we got a few interesting items that way. It's going to make a lot of things easier for us. 
So anyway, the undead, the, the crest, I keep saying undead merchant, the crestfallen warrior told us that some person got taken away when they curled up like a ball or something here. So, you know, it is a little bit of a, of a secret, I suppose. Uh, he does tell you, but yeah, you kind of, it gives you the prompt to stand up and it makes you sit here for so long. It's really trying to get you to not go back. There you go. But, you know, now that we've done that, it will be quick going to and from. <laughs> I have like a little beak from my Mask of the Sealers outfit. I look like a little bird. So now, all of a sudden, there's a matching <laughs> nest over here. I don't know, I guess that's what the, uh, that's what the crow has been doing in the meantime. He's been making that nest, but... Ugh. Just trying to anticipate his moves. I don't like these guys at all. But we actually get a really good uh, um, shield here. Probably one that I'll be using. Um, so let's see here. I'm going to go to the crows. And I'm going to do something real quick. So they did this much better in later games. You... You give me warm, give me soft. Yeah, so in future games, they give you clues as to what they actually want. Well, I guess three, they didn't really do it. And then when you set them down, like, they then, you know, become whatever. But this way, they, um, <laughs> you have to log out of the game. So I'm going to drop the sack. And then, yeah, if I pick it up, it'll be the sack again. But I think I, I can just... I think it's meant that you're supposed to drop it and you're supposed to come back. Um, or, like, drop something and then you, like, go in and then die or reload a bonfire or something. But, um... We're just gonna log out and log back in and see what the sack... You! You! Give me, give me. So that gives you the demon's great hammer, which is, this is what I was referring to. This is the weapon that the first uh, asylum de demon uh, had um, that you can get if you beat him the first time. But I said we can get it in other means during the game. So here's where we get it. Let's see what it says. Demon weapon built from the stone arch trees, used by lesser demons at North North Hunted Asylum. This hammer is imbued with no special power, but it merely beats foes to a pulp, providing you have the strength to wield it. Built from arch trees. Hmm. Let's take a look. I'm gonna, you know, rest in a bonfire here. So, yeah, the, the, the floor crumbles here if you walk over at least a certain part of it. And if the, these guys walk over the same part, they don't crumble. I think it's a little... I think it's a little cheap. 
Like, I don't think it's demonstrated all that well to the player what's meant to be going on. Um, but I'm gonna just try to beat this guy right off the bat. And then I will try to go through the rest of this area. This guy just requires patience. Arrow. <laughs> He's just spamming the same move over and over again. But yeah, you can get caught by some of this stuff, and it does major damage. Like, even that, it's silly. Bleed. This is like the best RNG. Just keep doing that. Nice bleed. I knew there was one more to bleed, so I figured I would do it. Why is he just doing the same move over and over again? I've never seen this. He always does that one where he, like, makes a move and it makes, like, the whole area in and around him blow up and it's really hard to dodge once you're right behind him. Well, that was easier than I thought. I thought we would struggle more with that. Um, while we... <laughs> All right. Anyway, you get a Titanite Slab from this boy. So this is one of the legendary slabs. And let's read what it has to say. Titanite Slab for weapon reinforcement. Legendary Slabs were the domains, the, or the domain of the gods. Legendary Slabs are the heirlooms of a nameless blacksmith deity who forged the weapons of other gods. Weapons forged with the slab became rare legendary weapons. I think that that blacksmith deity is known to us or is related to that person because I don't know. It seems that uh, everything they describe about the blacksmith deity is what the giant blacksmith does. So I mentioned this at the beginning of the playthrough. There's a, uh, a ladder up here and then there's the bent bars that go into the first section. Um, and you can see all the features that we talked about um, from inside before, but we're on the other side now. And the other thing that's different about this area is that now there are there are black knights here. Ooh, there are black knights um, that guard the halls. These are more like oh, <laughs> these are more like I guess the. Oh god. These are more like the people that should uh, guard the- wow. Got a Black Knight sword. You know, I was saying before that this was kind of all empty. There was no guards, there was no whatever. There's the demons, but that's it. So... I guess... I don't know why they're coming around. They're here now. Let's read that Black Knight sword, because that's, uh, that's pretty rare to get. Just from a one-off. We had the Black Knight Greatsword, but we didn't get the Black Knight Sword before. Probably a similar thing. Greatsword of the Black Knights who wander Lordran, who f used to face the Chaos Demons. The large motion that puts away the body into the attack reflects the great size of their adversaries long ago. Very similar thing. And we come into our old cell, where we used to be. There is now a stack of hair, apparently. And there is a corpse that has uh, a peculiar doll held on to it. And we will read this doll. A strange doll in a strange dress. There once was an abomination who had no place in this world. She clutched this doll tightly and eventually was drawn into a cold and lonely painted world.
that means nothing right now to us, technically. Um, but we should definitely keep it in mind. We have to keep in mind that there's someone that is an abomination and that there is a cold and lonely painted world because we will be visiting that, of course. All right, so now what we need to do, let's go this way, is now we have to fight, fight Oscar's hollowed self. He's not much of a thing. I wonder if he gets hit by... <laughs> he does. So yeah, he's wearing the Elite Knight armor, as you can see. And I don't know actually what sword that is. But he, dress he drops the Crest Shield which is my favorite shield of the game. We have the Grass Crest, which uh, raises our stamina recovery, but this is just, it's got 100% physical, it's got 80% magic, great stability. Fire and Lightning aren't the greatest, but I mean, I had a real nice shield for that before. So, I mean, it's just real good on all accounts and pretty low required strength requirement. Shield of a Nameless Knight, likely high ranked uh, Knight of Astora, one of the enchanted blue shields. The Crest Shield greatly reduces magic damage. I mean, it's literally the same as the Dragon Crest Shield. So, who knows? Maybe Oscar's using the Astora Straight Sword. I didn't really check. Um, alright. And I don't believe that there's any Black Knights over there. I think the only other Black Knight is in here. And I can't remember the direction that you're meant to approach him. Uh, not this way. He looks rather cool um, coming up this other way, so. A little quickly disperse of him. And yeah, so I just hit him now. And just giving us chunks at this point. I believe that's all that there is in here. So... Yeah. I think we're good. Oh yeah, these... I mean, I, you know, I, I handled the other guys so well, and yet these guys are going to be the ones that kill me. It's interesting, one of the guys, a couple of guys fell down for, oh, look at me, here I am, I'm like, oh, that's it, there's nothing else left. Aha, there is something left. I'm glad those guys fell down and reminded me. My favorite ring. Well, my favorite, favorite utility ring. Oh, always. That one will always get me. I like how these hollows are actually more powerful than the ones that you than you uh, encounter when you first get here. Like they do level up, which is kind of weird. And there's like new things like this. Like there's like another one of these guys. There's this. That's that guy who was there before, and then there's the spear guy. Come on. Now we found that uh, key on the top of the, like I guess the par the little parish or the little area where Petrus was. And now we can now get to this area, which leads us to that item we saw from below, the rusted iron ring, not the wood grain. Rusted makes sense for water, and that says. This iron ring was used to shackle the guilty. It is terribly rusted and faintly stained with blood. Those who find this strange ring to their liking will be pleased to find it easier to gain poor footing, to gain footing on poor ground such as swamps. So, 
that was used to shackle the guilty. Which implies that it was maybe not just used here. Because I, I don't know if anyone, even the people, you know, committing <laughs> these atrocities would claim that undead are committing, that they're guilty of anything. Um... But, you know, again, once I hear guilty, I think of Velka. And, um, but then they must have been used here. But why would that have anything to do with having poor footing? Especially since it's a shackle. All right. Well, let's go back. Do we have any other large tide knight? Can I level up before we go? Or is that like a next area thing? I should probably repair. Cool. Alrighty. Well. Just is gone. Hmm. I thought he only left if you bought his stuff. He did say last time we spoke to him that he was gonna go. I guess it's because we gave him this one of the spells from Quailana, which makes me want to go and do uh, talk to go find him. But we're gonna do that uh, after Anne Orlando, I think. I mean, at this point, you know, things are just so, getting so far spread out, you know, just jumping back, back down to Blight Town is, is pretty uh, non-trivial. It would be much better to, uh, to do that once we can warp. All right, well, for fun, Oops. Let's kill these guys. We have enough to level up too. And we should probably go human. Because we do... Do we get invaded in Sens? I don't think so. It's also time for me to feed the cats, so I mean, I'm gonna take a break here regardless. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I have three large Titanite. That's at least another. That could be two levels depending well, on where I'm at. You seem to be doing, need anything. Let's see if he has anything to I say. Know little of the dark. No. Um. Okay, reinforce. And if we can do this, that means we don't have to repair either. One of three. Oh, cool. Uh huh? And then here. And then it's two and then three. So we need five more to get to ten. Which we'll get in. Oh. Yeah, we should level up. Get yourself. Neither of it. Yeah, I, I was gonna buy the crest of Artorias, um, but I mean, we're not. I'm not gonna do that again. Like everything right now is Sens and Anne Orlando, and we haven't leveled up like real for for a while here. So I mean, like we should just continue to do that. And um, I'm just gonna put it. At, like I'm just. I'm not trying to like do any challenge or anything here. So I mean, like I'm getting hit enough here like we should start pushing up this um interesting thing here about these white circles if you don't know these white circles just indicate that someone in another world has cast a miracle it might be that they've cast a healing miracle or something but basically all it means is that you uh 
get a boost to your miracles. So if I were to use a healing miracle here, I would heal more than I than normal. And they actually have different thicknesses, so you can actually get like so if many people start casting in this area, then it becomes wider and wider. I actually don't know which one this is. I mean, this could just be one. This could be five people using this. I don't know. Um, I guess it's just people buffing before going to Sense Fortress or whatever. But I, I was gonna check if I had any. Oh, and I have to. Oh, and I have a Firekeeper Soul. I could have used that in Blight Town, but nowhere else. So, um, yeah. So let's pop these souls, see if we can level up, and then let's go human, and then we can take on Sense Fortress next time. Oh. Oh. Alright. Oh, I shouldn't have done that actually. I thought I was like, oh, I'll just get both as well. Don't need to do that. Alright, so on the quest for 900 more souls so we can level up. Uh, next time we take on Sen's Fortress. Bye.